left and they had wild and crazy parties, then tried to clean it up before you came home. Nehemiah left and came home to find all this. Here's what he found, verse 10. I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them. For the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled everyone to his field. Then contended I with the rulers and said, why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasures. And I made treasurers over the treasuries. Shemaiah the priest, Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, and the rest of these guys, for they were counted faithful. And their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Here's what he found. Watch this. And this is what sin in the house does. He said, I also found out, watch this, that the house workers, the folks in the temple, were not being paid. That they were not being taken care of. And because they were not being taken care of, they had to go and work in the fields. And because they had to go and work in the fields, that meant the house of God was being neglected. Now, now I want y'all to put the dots together. Tobiah had moved in. All the tithes and offerings and stuff had moved out. And somewhere in the line, perhaps Tobiah was pocketing some of the tithe money that belonged to the priests, the singers, and the porters. See, it wasn't the fact that sin was just living in the house, but sin was taking advantage of the things in the house. And so what Nehemiah saw was not only did he have to kick uh, Tobiah back, but here it is, he had to restore order back into the house of God. So here's the thing, he says, he had to balance the books. The Levites, the singers were not being paid. The temple was not being uh, kept up because those that worked in the church had gone back to their jobs. So, so, so here's the point, here's the point. As he looked out, Nehemiah was looking out, looking at folks, and he was looking for opportunities to encourage folks and to build up their faith so he went after them and said, come back to the house of God. We've set things in order. Here it is, here it is. A lot of times in order for us to deal with sins in the house, we got to balance the books. Meaning what? That there's stuff out of balance, stuff out of order. There's things out of kilter. What do you mean, Pastor? That means that the, the man of the house is not in his rightful position. Listen, he's in the house, but he's not in his rightful position. That everybody but him is running the show. Children running the show in the house. Wives running the show in the house. Where the man of God is supposed to step up and be a man in the house. And what he's done is he's abdicated his authority. He's given up what he's supposed to do in the house. And Nehemiah said, listen, I'm seeing disarray in the house. We got to set things in order. You know how you deal with sin? Allow everybody to be what God has called them to be. The man ought to be the man in the house. I got amens from the women. No men said amen. The man ought to step up and be a man in the house. And I'm tired of the excuse, my wife won't let me. I try to be the man, <laughs> pastor. But my wife, you know, it's my wife. You punk. Now, I didn't say be a brute. I didn't say be a chauvinist. I didn't say be overbearing. I said be a man. Set the books in order. Balance things in your house. You set the temperature for what goes on in the house. Same thing in the house of God. We love the women in the house of God. Matter of fact, I said it before, if it wasn't for the women in many churches, the house of God wouldn't even exist. But it's time for men to step up and be men in the house of God. It's time for men to take their rightful places. And I believe this without being chauvinistic, being hard, harsh. I believe women want a man. Come on, ladies, help me out. Nobody's going to say amen. 
I believe women want a man to take his rightful place. Come on, you go out on a date with a man. You don't want no wimpy man. Where are we going to eat? Well, I don't know, baby. What you want to do? I, I, where, where you want to go? Make a decision. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not in the notes. <laughs> are y'all here with me? Nehemiah saw the problems. He saw the outrage. Amen. And listen, I, 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 I want to say this as I get to the next point. I'm not apologizing for preaching God's word. I'm not apologizing for, for uh, uh, preaching the unadulterated word of God. But when I talk about setting the book straight, and I'm going to say this last point, I'm also talking about, watch this, in the house of God and in your own house. Men, I'm back to the men, here it is. Get up off that thing. Meaning what? Stop being so tightwadish with your money. Now, you get mad at your woman because she want to give a tithe, but you go buy a brand new video game or some new Jordans. Amen. Some folks are so tight with their money. We baptize them, and their wallet rises to the top. That thing floats. When we talk about balancing the books, putting things in order, setting things in order, I just talked about the people of the house of God didn't get paid. Listen, that means that the people gave. And I'm going to say this again, and I'm proud of this, and, and I hope you all take this when I say I'm proud of this, but we don't survive by selling chicken dinners. We don't survive by prostituting ourselves. I ain't asking none of y'all to put a sign on and stand in front of CVS and ask for money for your church where I've seen other folks do it. We survive because folks give and they give as God has blessed them. Amen. So you got to step up and continue to do what God called you to do. Amen. Are you with me? here? All right. Come on. Moving on. My time is up. We're late this day. Here we go. Watch this. The next point he says, verse 15, he says, not only did he balance the books, not only did he not compromise uh, 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 with sin, he kicked it out. He says, but he also, God had to, um, um, God's time had to be redeemed. Look at verse 15, real quick, verse 15. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and, and lading asses and also wine, grapes, and figs and all the manner of burdens which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. There dwelt men of Tyre, also therein which brought fish and all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Uh, let me stop right there, and I'll, I'll read the rest in a second. Notice, again, Nehemiah had left. He comes back to find all this. What did he find? Here's what he found. That on the Sabbath, folks were selling in and around the temple. Folks were working on the Sabbath day. In other words, he said, I've got to allow, under, get folks to understand that God's time has to be redeemed. Meaning what? Listen, you give Caesar sometimes six days a week. Sometimes. All God asks for is one. And there are some that won't give God that day. Because of working, because of other things. Now, now, I'm glad I heard the testimony this morning. We did not collaborate that. You mean to tell me that you can't give God one day of worship and not work on Sunday? I said it before. God will, uh, the devil will pay you to miss your blessing. 
A amen, lights and walls. And I don't want to preach as unsympathetic to the economic plight or not understanding the economic situation. I'm talking about standing on principles. And I worked in corporate America, and corporate America would say, we're working on Sunday, and I would say, I'll be in after church because I've got to worship. There's nothing that's going to keep me from worship. Matter of fact, I need worship to keep my sanity. I wish I had somebody. See, and what Nehemiah saw was that folks were compromising. They were giving up the Lord's day, and he had to redeem the time. He had to bring people back so that they could under, understand that Sabbath, Sunday, in our case, was for God. So here's what he did in verse 17, 22. He locked the gates. He kept them out. He said, you can't come in here. He locked the gates, kept them out, and put guards over watch to say anybody coming here that didn't come to worship, they can't come in. Look at verse number 17. He says, then I contended with the nobles. What evil thing is this that you do and profane the Sabbath day? He says in verse 19, it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded the gates should be shut and charged that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set at the gates that there should no burden be brought in on Sabbath day. And so the merchants and sellers of all kind and wear lodged without Jerusalem once or twice. And then I testified against them and said unto them, why are you lodged against the wall? If you do it again, I'm going to lay hands on you. Oh, I love it right there. Now, come on, I, I, I'm going to close this thing. Well, watch this. Now, Nehemiah, we have learned, was a praying man. Nehemiah prayed about everything. But in this case, Nehemiah said, I will go upside your head. I will put some hands on you. Why? Listen, not because he was violent. I want y'all to catch this. But because of the dignity of God and the sacredness of God's day, he was ready to contend for God's day. He was ready to stand up and fight for what was right. Listen, saints, that's what God wants us to do. There's some stuff we ought not be doing on Sunday. Come on, I'm going to say it. It's my last sermon, at least in Nehemiah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> There's some stuff we ought not be saying on Sunday. Listen, again, from this pulpit, because I know folks will go home and say, Pastor, just don't understand. His kids are grown. He don't get it. Listen, I had small children in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and my children played on basketball, soccer, and plays. All of them. And I told teachers, coaches, and everybody, they can be in it, but on Sunday... We're in church. Amen. They will not be playing, not being in no plays on Sundays. That's God's day. And sometimes you got to take a stand for God's day. And here's what I believe. God honors it when you stand for him. Now, now, now i got to say this. I'm really going to get in trouble. Please, listen, Pastor Kirk at SharonBible.org. Amen. There it is. Because you're going to send me emails after this one. You don't have no future Michael Jordans. You ain't got no Serena Williams. I know you, you think your kid is good. And all it is is recreation. If your kid was that good, and I've seen a couple of them, I'd be the first one in their corner saying, hey, you need to get this kid in a, in a shop. You, this this, this kid's going to be on TV going, hey, mom, one day. But for the most part, stop compromising. Take them on all days, but give God his day.